So in this final video on the Lophotrochozoa group of organisms, we're going to now be looking at the last phylum of interest. Um, and just to reiterate, we're starting off with our ancestral protists, true tissued, uh, bilateral, first mouth forming Lophotrochozoan with a Lophophore and a Trochophore larval state. Don't forget that that makes a Lophotrochozoa the Lophotrochozoa. Now, the last phylum to remember of the Lophotrochozoa, very uh, simple phylum is the phylum Analyta. And that's what we'll talk about here. Um, phylum Analyta, uh, the major characteristic to never forget about these guys is the following. The defining characteristic. They're characterized by, if we think of protist terms, right? Um, the major characteristic here, this is important in the evolution of life itself, of animal life, is the fact that you have something known as segmentation in this group of organisms, in this phyla. Segmentation. This would mean that you have segments of your body. Specifically, you have segments that are going to denote your body wall. You have a coelom, a true coelom, of course, and you also have many internal organs. In essence, what you're doing right now is taking a large, what used to be a very unorganized structure of just groups of cells, groups of organs and tissues, and you're putting them into segments, into compartments, into specialized regions in order for you to have this segmented structure that phylum Analyta does have. It's a big part of animal evolution, and all of these things, as I've mentioned already, are going to be divided into very specific segments and compartments, divided into segments. And you have seen this type of thing before because if you imagine something like an earthworm, many people have done earthworm dissections in their science classes before. If you look at an earthworm on the outside, it looks very simple. But the idea is that their segments on the outside and even uh, that segmentation, uh, if you extrapolate it towards their inner structure, shows the compartmentalization, the specialization that we see within phylum Analyta. Segmentation. Analyta, don't forget that. In addition, Another thing to remember about Analyta is that their digestive tract is not segmented. Now, this is interesting here. Why would you not want a seg segmented digestive tract when I told you it's, you know, it's nice to have specific regions devoted to specific um, you know, functions? But here it's not. Actually, what you want with a digestive tract is one smooth point of entry and exit because that's what's going to happen. You're going to ingest something, you're going to digest something, you're going to expel something. You don't want segments to mess that up. You don't want special compartmentalization to really mess that up. So you want a single stream that's going to allow for a nice smooth digestion and even ingestion of food. And that's why you don't want this to be segmented. So don't forget that. And finally, in terms of where they're found, uh, earthworms, think of them. They're found really everywhere, these type of analyta organisms. They're found in marine, they're found in fresh water, they can be in the water, they can be living in the water, or they can even be living on land. They're usually found in marine, fresh water, or even damp soil environments. Usually after rain, you see earthworms coming out, and that's because they have this home of damp soil environments and that's what they like to be at and that's really because of their segmentation function the fact that they need to work in an environment that has a damp sort of feel to it and that's it that's all we need to know about phylum analyta think of an earthworm uh, very basic idea behind this is that they are segmented organisms of the lophotrochozoans who are developing their mouth first that exhibit bilateral symmetry that have true tissues and organs definitely seen here and are of course from that ancestral last universal common ancestor